Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Mirko. Um, today, episode number eight, we are hosting uh, the Karen Australian Barista Champion. So, uh, tuck yourself in, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and be ready to join me and uh, Matthew Lewin. So, I'm gonna do the same, brew some coffee. So today, before I get into introducing our guests, today I'm drinking the final drop of Teen Man. It's a beautiful Panama Geisha that Ben was kind enough to uh, give to me. So yeah, we're gonna enjoy this. And I'm gonna weigh actually how much water we're putting in because coffee is not just as much as I would like to. So I'm gonna put a little bit less water. So, the guest today, like I said, Matt Lewin. Um, he's the current, he's a 2019 Australia Barista Champion. So he is very experienced in competition. He's currently working for Honor Coffee. He's been working for Honor for a while. And uh, he's just involved in a lot of coffee projects. And um, basically, you guys will be able to ask him a lot of questions. Uh, you'll be able to ask him all the things that you need to know about coffee competition, uh, about honor coffee, about Australia, about competing, anything that you like. Um, the format of this show is very simple. I have a set of questions for Matt. Uh, hopefully I can call him Matt. I haven't actually met him yet, but um, basically... I uh, will be having a set of questions for Matthew. Uh, we're gonna go through it, have a good chit chat, hope it's well. And then as we go, you're able to ask some questions. So I'm gonna pin the comment there with his name. That's Matt Lewin. Ask any questions. Cool, we're gonna pin it, switch. And uh, yeah, welcome everybody. So let's say hi to a few people. Farhad, Kiki, Quantan, Bitur Pen, uh, Gabe, Danny Moore, Mosen, Abar, and Suchi and Mori just joined. So yes, we're ready to go. Do you have your cup of coffee? I hope you do. And if you don't, grab one. And uh, let's start this very soon once this bad boy has finished brewing. And uh, yeah, if you missed it, I'm drinking the last drop of uh, Jensen Geisha Panama from Team Man. Ben was kind enough to um, send me this coffee. And uh, yeah, it was, it was delicious. It is delicious. Dani, hola, Argentino desde Ciudad de Mexico. Dani, uh, Good to see you. Sorry, we'll keep it all in English for now, even though I know what you're saying. And uh, Matthew has joined, so we are nearly ready to go. I'll just have to plunge that in, grab a set, and then we'll, we'll be able to get it all started. So it's actually my first cup of coffee. I was waiting for this moment, so <laughs> um, yeah. Everything will be better after this, for sure. So, yeah, if you just tuned in, Matthew is the current Australia Barista Champion, and much more than that. Uh, very experienced in competing, as well as coffee, coffee farms, and, uh, yeah, he knows his stuff. Hey, Coffee X. Hey, everybody. Um, so, yeah, you're in for a good treat. Um, so, feel free to ask any questions. After we finish, me and him, with some of questions, and um, yeah, we're happy to keep it very interactive, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to having him, so I'll send him a request right now. Uh, here we go. Works. We had some issues with others. Unfortunately, everybody's doing lives, so. Hey, dude. Hey, mate. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you doing? Yeah, doing well in isolation land, you know. <laughs> I see. Uh, Melbourne or are you in Canberra? 
No, I'm in Melbourne. Yeah, so I'm living in Melbourne now. I was in Canberra for two years. Yeah. And now back living here, but uh, have to be here anyway. Can't go anywhere else at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, man. Um, yeah. um, let, let's get this out of the way. Can I call you Matt or you go by Matthew? Whatever Matt is good? Say. Yeah, Matt's great. Yeah, whatever, whatever you like. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's your name, so we'll go yeah. by you. No, um, Matt, Matthew. Um, I've, I've been called worse, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, man. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for joining in, man. Um, really, a real pleasure. Yeah, we had, we yeah. had, you know, a good, a good response of this live stream. A lot of people liking to be connected all over the world. Uh, Grow yeah. Theory just joined in. And, uh, yeah, having you is... Uh, yeah, just another another great character in the coffee industry, and uh, I've seen you live a couple of times at Mice. I was there last year. I was working for another coffee roaster at the time, but um, I've, I've seen your performance. And uh, I guess the obvious question to get started things: uh, How did you start it in the coffee industry? If you want to tell us a little bit your journey, and you know, you, we'll start somewhere, I suppose. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, coffee is always an interesting one because you don't go to university for it. It's um, something that you often, or I find people fall into or they, maybe they just really enjoy it. And I was, I was definitely on the other side. I, I did go to uni. I wanted to be a lawyer and do all that sort of stuff. And um, I traveled to Europe. I spent some time there with my girlfriend in Switzerland. I came back. And I didn't want to continue my study. And I started earning money um, just doing like retail management jobs and different things like that. I didn't love it by any stretch of the imagination, but I enjoyed being an adult <laughs> and earning money. So um, coming back from Europe, I, I discovered a love for everything hospitality. As you know, in Europe, they have a rich history of pretty much everything from, from arts and, and, and culinary. So I really was captured there with that side of life. And when I came back to Melbourne, I seeked that out. And uh, the first time that blew my mind was when I went to St. Ali, when Mark Dundon opened that 15 years ago. And at that moment, it completely transformed my view of coffee and completely captivated me to then do it as a career. And, and from then, uh, you know, the rest is history. I, I just started immersing myself in coffee and learned how to be a barista. So making coffee here and there. I had a few friends that had a few cafes and, and really spent quite a bit of time exploring that space and just getting to know coffee. It takes, well, back then it, it took a while because there wasn't as much information around as well. Like there is now it's one touch of a button on your computer screen and you're, immersed in a world of avant-garde coffee knowledge. So uh, at that time, there, you know, there wasn't much around, you know, people like Dave Macon was, you know, that was a big name in the industry and, yeah. uh, and you know, really wonderful people like that. So Mark Dundon and, and, and other people. So yeah, that, that's, that's my history of how I got into coffee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And cool, man. I think, uh, I that's think it, it really it really resonates well with me and with my story and with my message and, and, and mission in life, which is, yeah, you, you're the perfect example right now. I didn't know that you wanted to be a lawyer and you dropped out of uni. I think it's so re it's such an important component to follow your true passion, uh, no matter what you enjoy, whether it's pet or whether it's coffee in this case of food. Um, because it just gives you that constant reminder that you're doing something that you love. Yeah. And I get you when you talk about Europe. I'm, I'm, I'm from Europe. And uh, mm. yeah, I started in coffee about nine years ago. And, you know, back then there wasn't too much, if you think about it. Like, like the past five years really exploded, yes. you know, exponentially. It's, it's, it's kind of fresh even in Melbourne. So now I, I agree with you. And, yeah. Sinali with Mark Dundas, yeah, yeah, good, yeah. interesting character. I haven't met him yet, but heard a lot about him. He's a low-key cat. Um, so, yeah, sorry, obviously, you know, yeah, sorry, go on. Just to, just to, like, tip the hat and, and pay credit where it's due, you know, and I think 
many people agree, you know, he kind of started this thing. Um, obviously in Melbourne, but Australia wide. And, you know, Mark spent some time previous to that inception, if you will, of St. Ali in South Melbourne in America. So he, and he was also captivated by a lot of things the Americans were doing, you know, that, that precedes Mark in terms of Stumptown and Intelligentsia and other people. And people have been doing specialty coffee for a while. And I know it's really cool these days, but yeah, we need to remember, I think, you know, these people that really brought it to us and enabled us to live this wonderful life in this industry that we've all helped grow now. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I always try and come back to a lot of gratitude and remembering that sort of stuff. And like I said, people like Mark Dundon and Dave Macon and, and all these people that, um, yeah, in my world, shaped it dramatically and significantly. Well, and not, not because you're on the show, but you should put yourself on that list in the sense of, you know, you're, you're, you're another uh, of those characters and people in the industry who have uh, rejuvenated, but also have been giving a substantial contribute towards where, where it is today at the end of the day, because, <laughs> you know, um, it, well, it takes, it takes a while to become Australia Barista champion. And uh, it's not just about winning. It's also about, the process that goes with it and it, it, you know, and you know, it goes from farm to, to the roastery to spending a lot of time with all the people and really be, you know, nurturing this culture of that, that, that we're in it. So, you know, you talked about Europe and having a culture and uh, yet Europe doesn't have a strong culture of good coffee as well yeah. as we have here, you know, it's, it's quite, it's quite a, a paradox in, in, a, in, a, in a way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, in terms of, of yes, yeah, sorry, go on. You made me think of here in Australia and Melbourne in particular, and then Sydney and so on. We really did create this own, our own version of coffee and our own version of cafes, and and then later with these commercial kitchens doing chef breakfast food and putting it together and producing almost these Australian style cafes that turned into like super cafes you know they'd they would have amazing kitchens and some of them would roast coffee on site and and you'd have this all-in-one incredible supercharged super cafe experience and then you know that filtrated through the world and people would know about these australian cafes and in particular like a melbourne style cafe which you know, we've all seen in London and, and I, I know New Zealand were doing it for a little while on a smaller scale, almost before us or at the same time as us. But yeah, it's, it's interesting how we've really taken that craft coffee, that Avo on toast, those, you know, <laughs> and, um, and roasting a lot of coffee and really putting our, our stamp and our brand on what a cafe in the modern day can be. And I think that's really cool that we've done that. And also, to, to play to your point on paradox, it, it is very interesting because coffee really quickly for, for so many years was, was just a commodity. And it was something that, you know, was everywhere. It was traded as much as oil and it was never really considered a specialty product. It wasn't grown at the farm that way. It wasn't roasted that way. It tasted like and always did coffee, right? It was strong, it was bitter and it was black. And only in the last 20 five years have we taken a torch to it seeing that we can unlock all this potential at the farm realize it's this amazing seed fruit that's got a kaleidoscope of flavors and all of a sudden it's become specialty so it is quite new for the world to to, to sort of view coffee that can taste like white jasmine flowers and raspberries as opposed to just their coffee you know and they're not wrong no one's wrong when they love the taste of coffee we've just taken what it always was for a really long time, hundreds and maybe thousands of years. And we've expanded on it in 20, 25 years. And we've unlocked this potential. So the, you know, the paradox there is between history and kind of modern specialty coffee. And we should never be arrogant that people like coffee the way that it tastes as coffee, but it's, it extends to restaurants as well. Like even the best restaurants around the world, they'll have amazing food, but they won't necessarily have amazing coffee, right? So, yeah this is also starting to come through in small ways where you have 
Noma with Tim Wendelbow and you have, you know, he uh, Dinner by Heston with uh, some Proud Mary and, and, um, and I think Attica in Australia has Market Lane. And, you know, it's, it's so wonderful that in, in this modern era of coffee and, and specialty coffee, restaurants and, and so many other people are starting to appreciate that coffee can be so much more. And with that comes that it gets the, the respect it deserves as well. For sure. So For I, sure. Love that. I love that connection from, you know, from what we're doing and, um, and seeing more people and more establishments around the world really, really grasp the concept and embrace it. Yeah, it's cool. And, and, I, and, and to that point, which you kind of touch base, I also feel when you were talking about the Melbourne, you know, the Melbourne cafe coffee culture, I also feel that you and I and the people surrounding the industry have made the industry. We are a people industry. It's a people game. And we tend to sort of forget that sometimes. But, yes. you know, now baristas are cool and some of them have tattoos and they get, you know, they get more dates than a lawyer because <laughs> because they're hip and they're fun and whatnot. Um, yeah. Maybe their paycheck is not still quite as good as a lawyer, but, you know, it, it's still it's still relevant in terms of, creating that vibe and feel and look it's funny that you mentioned jasmine tea versus bitter sorry jasmine uh, white jasmine notes into coffee versus bitter coffee because i'm from italy originally and uh, i never drank coffee in italy i i overdosed when i was two years old true yeah. story at, at the age of two i used to drink coffee every single night when i would switch bed between my bedroom and my parents wow and I probably drank too much mocha pot. Um, I shouldn't and, laugh, but that's, that's, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> it is. And then I had too much, and I just developed a, a, a distaste for it. And I'm not sure if you know him, but I had the luck to have a coffee mentor like Ken, uh, Ken Tang. He's the father of the boys from Workshop Brothers. I know, and, I know Ken has got a great deal of respect for, the, for Ken. Yeah. yeah. So I was working with him six, seven years ago. And, you know, it was like we were working on a Slayer and we're using Monk Paridama at the time, uh, yeah. um, you know, Marwins. And I was able to drink some stupidly expensive, and you don't have to drink expensive coffee to be good. I get it. But mm -hmm. from, you know, pre-ground, dark, bitter, you know, horrible coffee in a mocha pot to a jasmine tea experience like yeah. I had in filter. So that's how I developed as well. And uh, I was lucky to have people like him around me. So I got you, man. Um, yeah, so we're, we're also lucky to have those influences, you know, like the modern day I, I've had uh, Sasha Sestik and uh, Hidenore Izaki, John Gordon, you know, these people, Sam Cora, um, Tom Beaumont, you know, these people of, of recent years have, you know, helped shape what I've become, you know, significantly, even with a, a considerable base of, um, of, you know, of experience with coffee. So, yeah, I get you, man. And once again, you know, you show me that looking back and, and you know, showing gratitude and, 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 you know, and there's so many other people I could also, you know, uh, share with you guys it's just there's so many but um yeah it's it's nice to hear that you know those things are important and they remain you know great memories but significant parts of your journey yeah it's really cool cool no um going back at you i mean um obviously people know where you work what you do and we're gonna touch base on that in a little while but just for people to get understanding on what did it take for you basically to win last year in terms of preparation, in terms of uh, mental sharpness, and really even in terms of quantity of hours that you punched into practice and practice over and over and over. It's always an interesting conversation because I talk to quite a lot of baristas about this, especially in the past. Um, it's definitely a culmination of a journey I think it's incredibly hard, especially in Australia, to win something like the Australian Barista Championship in your first year. You know, the saying, you don't know what you don't know. I think it's appropriate 
to life because you're always becoming an evolved version of yourself. And often you look back and you think, ah, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that then. I didn't get that then. Things didn't click then. And that's the really interesting part about living and, and evolving as a human and whatever you do within that, that life. But to, to go back into coffee, it just, for me particularly, took years of layering to become aligned with what I had to know, essentially, to then put it all together and go and win. And for me last year was, was probably a summary of all those things, um, all those things really aligning myself, my maturity, I was settled. Um, I was, you know, in Canberra, I'd been working with uh, Sasha for second year and yeah, I, I had a real grasp of, of all those things, all the ingredients to, to make a good recipe. And then I think, the, the concept that I'd chosen as well was really who I was at that point. So when I say the concept, my, my routine, my story, but it's more than just creating something to talk about. This was actually really important for me. Um, the year before I'd gone really deep into presenting frozen coffee as a preserved uh, product on stage, you know, with ultimate uh, ultra low freezing temperatures and, and all this sorts of stuff, which was, which was amazing because I'd been on the frozen train and really pushing that for years. But, I really use that within my routine, but I stepped <clears throat> somewhere completely different. And I spoke about the connection between everyday drinkers and, and this world, especially that just keeps evolving so quickly. You know, we have, we'd open Sydney on our married film, we had $16 coffees on the menu and a lot of people didn't understand it. And a light bulb went on for me. And I said to myself, this is, this is going to continue to happen. You know, best of Panama uh, price records get broken every year. Yeah, processing is just on a crazy level of detail. We are so good at what we're doing at every stage, uh, at every chain, every part of the chain in coffee. So next year, it'll be a $20 coffee. Next year, it'll be a 30, a 50, a hundred. And if we don't bridge the gap to get people that only taste coffee as coffee and understand it, we're never, we're never going to be part of that same world or that bubble. So I really explored that and then went really deep with that honestly I spent a full year with Sasha on that routine from regionals to nationals and then to worlds and the amount of hours like honestly I, I could say for six to nine months I, I probably worked 30 hours 35 hours a week up to 40 hours a week on my routine on top of my job wow. yeah um I hope I'm not exaggerating either. I like on the weekend, some, sometimes I would get in on Saturday and Sunday at about 6 a.m. and I would leave at 10 o'clock at night and I would look at my clock and I would think, where did 16 hours or whatever that, that is? And to be honest with you, I didn't actually know where that amount of time went because I absolutely was in flow state. I loved it. And I think there has to be an element of that because it can be quite grueling to put in that much work for a routine. But when you're so aligned with your values or your routine, you have a bunch of experience and you know how coffee needs to be prepared and you are prepared to go down every rabbit hole and tick off everything as much as you can within a 12 month period, you put all that together, listen to great mentors like Sash and Hide and just put everything you have into it and, and, you know, good things will happen. Now, within that also, some little pro tips, I guess, is really understanding what's on trend within the competition circuit. And I don't mean necessarily use Geisha coffee or don't, or I mean how coffee should be expressed, how that espresso should taste. Should it be more weighted? Should it be really silky, crisp and longer extractions? You know, what, how, what sort of flavor clarity, like within that score sheet, really dialing in for that year with your copy and your routine and your message to know exactly how that can look as this complete package. Because the feedback I got from Winning Australia um, was that each course with the routine, with the, the flavor experience, all had such cohesion and made so much sense that it was that complete package. 
And yeah, I posted high scores every day for, for last year. I think I was second, second, first. So really consistent. And people talk about it's your year. I don't believe in that at all. Because as we can see this year, a lot of previous cha champions last year have come back and many of them haven't won again. You know, the game resets every time you go out on the stage. But if you can go out there and be so prepared, like when I went to Worlds and had that extra two months to prepare with um, Sash and Hugh Kelly by my side, and day one I was first in the world, um, you know, we knew that we'd done the work, you know, to, to, to be at that level. And it was just a confirmation I've never been so ready for anything like I was ready for the World Barista Championships. And, you know, you go into the semifinals and, silly, <laughs> you change a couple of small things. And at that level of, like, Formula One-style coffee, when you change half a mil on your signature ingredient because that's what you think tastes better, or you change your flavour descriptor on your espresso, you can, you know, you can drop and shift your place down dramatically and... You know, that's a learning lesson in, you know, in itself. But, yeah, you put all that together and uh, everything aligns and you, and you put in the work and you know that you're going to hop, hop out on that stage and you don't hope that it's going to go right. You know that every moment's going to go right. It's that level of preparation, which for me is 12 months. For that wow. Reason. But it's, it's really six years of preparation you know to be honest with you that, the first that's couple it of years the first couple of years competing i put my hands up i I'm just figuring it out you know you you watch everyone else's routines around the world you don't really have your own style you don't really have your own identity and i think craig simon actually said this to me who's you know a very good friend he said it's only when you start to not watch other people's videos, it's only when you start to walk your own path and you're not even really, no disrespect, but you're not even really interested in what anyone else is doing. You're just your own person, your own identity, you're walking your own path. That's when you'll start to do really well. And you know what? He, he was spot on because as soon as I started to, in 2017, work with Kid A and explore the frozen coffee stuff and then the next year go deeper and then last year, really, you know, present all those years, you know, collectively into one routine. Uh, yeah, it, it was an incredible experience and so humbling and so rewarding. And, and, you know, one of the most important things I've ever achieved. And definitely the last thing I'll say, I'll, I'll jump off this big rant of mine is... No, no, no please, please. Yeah. Barista, comp barista competition so far is pretty much the one of the only things I've put 100% of myself into. Yeah. Well, I think, well, thank you. Thank you for that. And look, I mean, well done again. I think, uh, I think you really crashed it. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just a confirmation of what you said. And it's all of it put together. I think that the element of patience that you touched on, it's very underestimated, like you said. Uh, you know, your final routine was not 12 months, it was six years, put a piled in together. Um, and, that's, and that's humble even to, to say that. And I think that plus the mindset of coming back, because a lot of people would feel discouraged, and it's part of my, one of my following questions, uh, they feel a sense of discouragement. Um, they lose a little bit of hope because they've lost or they didn't yeah. make it or they got so close and then they just like F this, I'm just gonna, I don't know, go back to my barista job and do, you know, overtime and work harder and make more money, whatnot. So I think I think that's in, that's a very strong yeah, sharp mind, uh, combined with passion plus uh, patience, you know. The sixteen hour uh, you know into the lab flew because you loved what you were doing, which is extremely essential. And what you believed in, which was a routine and a combination of all of that. And, you know, uh, probably even if you got the second spot last year, it would still have been just as good as first spot because you believed in, in what you brought to the judges, which is great. Um, it's really good you, you, the, the, the message was so important and, and it's still what I carry on today when I talk to baristas or I talk to anybody it's about <clears throat> trying to make the world of coffee more connected rather than having 
pointy end specialty and, and say every day people that view coffee as coffee, which is just completely cool. So That's right. you, know, you don't abandon those ideas. They're not just for a comp stage. They're not a flash in the pan. You don't just throw them away. And all those things that have meant a lot, they continue, you know, all the frozen coffees all through our honor shops, you know, and all around the world, people are freezing coffee. And I didn't invent freezing coffee. I just helped drive it from some other pioneers like George Howell and, you know, Chris Hendon and Maxwell and Michael Cameron and lots of other people <clears throat> that have been doing it for, you know, longer than I have. So, you know, that's what's the most rewarding thing is when you present things on the stage that you believe in and they continue and filtrate through the industry, like Matt Perger with the EK grinder, like look at all of us, you know, it's our most fundamental grinder, you know, in, in a cafe. So, you know, this is yeah. the stuff that makes competition cool. It's, it's an innovation platform where the latest way of thinking and the latest technology is presented on the stage. But when that is also able to continue into people's cafes and improve coffee, like that's when it all comes full circle and makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for all the people who are asking through questions, uh, I'm going to read them through it in a few minutes. We'll just go through my questions and then we'll answer yours, guys. Uh, just yeah. because, uh, luckily, Matt is a talkative guy. Uh, sometimes it depends. Some people have short answers, some others longer. But in your case, it's best so that we can get even more value out of it. And uh, you kind of touched base on it already, but I think for people tuning in now, uh, or people who want to get into competition, how important is to be surrounded by the right mentors? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's really important. And that doesn't mean you have to join some cool coffee company just because you want to win. Um, I learned really early on from Hide, who flew over from Japan to train me for the first time in 2017, I think it was. And he sat down in front of me and he said, thank you for your trust. We're going to go on this big journey. I just want to let you know that I'm not here to make you a champion. I'm here to make you uh, a, a great person and a, and a great coffee ambassador. Um, and I was like, what? <laughs> what? What do you mean? And that took so long to, to land with me. But now I get what he means. And because of that, it's helped shape who I've become. So in terms of everybody, you don't have to have the same goal. You don't have to compete to win. You don't have to compete to be an ambassador of the industry or a celebrity or whatever motivation you have. But you need to have a reason to compete and you need to know who you are within that. That takes time. That's fine. And it's a really challenging process. So you need to have a why because when you do get deeper into it, if you love it, because that's what will happen or you'll put the tools down and you won't do it because you're not into it. But if you do love it, you're going to be putting in some big days, some big years to do really well because it'll, it'll grab you. you. You know, you'll get the bug. And within that, you need to know what your why is because when you're tired, exhausted, when you can't see your friends, family, or your dog, maybe as much because you're in the training room, um, you need to come back to that why because it'll test you. So that's really important. Why, why do you want to compete? Why are you in coffee? And who are you? What do you love in coffee right now? You answer those three things, write it pages and pages and pages of that to know who you are why you're competing and why you love coffee. And then within, from there, connect. Connect with people. Connect with Sash, Matt Lou and Craig Simon. Connect with baristas overseas. As you were pointing out now, we have this world that's so connected. Like, get in touch. Ask questions. But ask questions with so much respect and, and, and gratitude and adding value as well. Like, connect in the right way. Um, and also, I think, to your point to add, which is, you know, you kind of already said what I want to say. I think people stop themselves from reaching out to people and sending a quick DM or a quick email. And, uh, and that's probably mistake number one, because we are made by people in this industry, which are extremely, you know, a lot of them are good people. And uh, they might not answer you straight away because they got 100 emails to answer to, but... 
ultimately, if you ask without entitlement, you know, yeah. then you can win. Because if you, are, if you ask and you're like, oh, I want to become the next World Barista Champion and I also want to get paid $80,000 a year to work at your coffee shop, chances are that you're going to get nothing out of it versus I'm hungry, I don't care about money, I just want to be right next to you. I'm not going to talk for the first six months, uh, and I don't care if you pay me. I mean, that's another extreme. Yeah, and you can go to that extreme. You can look at sushi chefs in Japan where they, they'll, they can't touch their knives for 10 years and, and lots of things. And, we, like, we don't have to use those extremes. But, uh, yeah, I think D-Train's asked, like, why do you compete? You talk to someone like Sasha, and they know exactly why they're in coffee. You know, it's, it's for him, a lot of it for competing was all about the farms, you know, and, and his message was connecting, you know, the brister and the, the farmer and the consumer for a greater world of coffee. And then look what he's gone on to do. For me, at the beginning, it was all about the first year I competed, I did really well. I made top six in Australia with the caliber of Matt Perger and Craig Simon and Sasha Sestik and all these people around me. So initial success propelled me to continue. And at that point, it was all about learning more about coffee, becoming a better coffee professional, pushing myself. It was getting the best out of me. I found something which got the, the best out of me. And that was why I was in coffee and that was why I was competing at that point. Now that completely changed because I got all those things essentially for free the more I continued. And then what started to happen was that I realized the more that I competed and the more I learned, the more I could give back to whatever I was doing in coffee. The more of a, a voice that I had in coffee, the more I could essentially project that and, and help influence anyone that I came in contact with on how I think we can build a better world and specialty coffee. That's one of the huge things for me. Huge. I've, I've spent many years at farms, um, working with farmers, buying coffee, traveling origin for five, six years. I love farms and I love coffee where it comes from at the source. I know all about it, but it's not where my, it's not where my why is like Sasha. You know, my why is definitely with people and, you know, being, being a voice now because I have that platform and to, to help shape the way that it can be. And I'm extremely proud of that. And I'm also extremely humbled by that. And I work with a team at Honor that has seven Australian coffee champions in the one building at one time. And I'm going to put it out there. There's not a single ounce of ego. And I'm big and I'm a big boy and I'm, and I'm great and fancy and all this sort of stuff. Everyone is so humble and so incredibly connected and they... Everyone in Honor shares everything. And this isn't a pitch towards Honor. This is more about people that have reached the top of their game and they're the most lovely, humble people you'll meet. The and I think... People. It's just, it blows my mind. And I think, look where I ended up there with those people. And, you know, I can pick up the phone and have a chat to most coffee pro professionals around the world. And I find that they're all the same. <laughs> they're, all, they're all just a bunch of incredibly talented, passionate slightly you know warped because you have to be people that <laughs> just make this industry incredible and, and they've all got a different why and yeah it, it's just awesome so so my why is really about just helping where i can to, to shape the industry and what i think it should be which is specialty coffee super humble we keep growing we don't know everything we keep learning and yeah it's and if i ever do compete again uh I look forward to, you know, how deep that can continue to go. Yeah. Cool, man. I think, uh, I think the reason why the seven of you uh, or all the others are still humble is because, you know, to close it off with, with, with your way, um, they're still aligned to, you know, ear to date to their own whys. Yeah. So you're still aligned with your why and Sash is aligned with his whys and Hugh is is why and and that's important the consistency of why you're doing what you're doing um now in terms of that 
Uh, we've got a couple more questions before we dive into the Q&A uh, session. Um, so what are you currently doing for, uh, for ONA? Like what, what's your current role so that people can understand, you know, what, even in terms of career, what, what, what are you doing now? Yeah, sure. So I'm in the, the, the business development side of our business. So <clears throat> I look after a few states in terms of our, our wholesale um, business, arm of the business, and that's been a wonderful a new element to explore within the world of coffee for myself. So doing a lot more management, a lot more strategy, a lot more focused business growth, working with some incredible people like Tom Beaumont and Sasha Sestik. That's uh, just been wonderful. And then within that too, I'm part of the research and development team for Honor Coffee with Hugh Kelly and Angus Mackey. And we've actually got a lot of people part of that. Sam Cora, um, Yannick, like there's just so many. Danny Wilson, you know, that think tank of people, uh, which is the most exciting part, is, is what produces all these wonderful coffees with Project Origin. Um, yeah, so being a part of that team and all of our retail team as well. We, we're part of, you know, we're part of that research and development sector where we're all pushing new ideas all the time, every day, and a lot of those things end up in competition. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what it looks like. And when I can, I'm, I'm traveling quite a lot. So you'll find me every week traveling interstate in Australia to a different state, uh, doing something with our teams with coffee, uh, with honor, and also traveling, you know, internationally to do different things as well. I've seen you. I've seen you popping up on the Melbourne Raider, uh, one of your latest trips as well, with your, you know, coffee coffee wholesale partners or whatever you call it, customers. Yeah, yeah, through COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's um yeah it's it's good to see people professionals as well in the first in you know in the first uh, lines of the field as well. I think it's quite quite uh, important for for the industry as well and in terms of coffee well um it's a million dollar question but what would you like to see uh, in the future of coffee just in general if there's anything that you know you're like i would love to see the uh, something that comes to mind straight away and, and it's no it's no um not having a go at our industry at all it's because I, I get it coffee's one of the most challenging things to get right because unlike a bottle of wine with coffee, there's so many moving parts and any point along that chain from growing it to roasting it, to especially to brewing it, things can go wrong. And if you mess up the brew or you don't tank your coffee properly, you don't serve it in the right cup, the whole experience and intention is lost. So, but within that, I would really love us to realize that we have come a long way as an industry all the way from a farm to the cup and i'd love for us to stop trying to fix everything <laughs> like, there's always or it feels to me there's always a problem now we, we've become hyper focused on fixing problems oh this is wrong and that's wrong this brewing is wrong and that's wrong and it can be a bit critical and I, I think it would be nice for us to realize that hey we've, we are mature we've come a long way Let's just enjoy the fact that things are great. Coffee from the farm's never been better. Brewing's never been better. Knowledge sharing connections never been better. And please, all baristas and all competitors and everybody around the world, let's stop trying to fix problems that don't exist. Let's try and enjoy and acknowledge and just say, how good is coffee? Because we've come a long way and um yeah science is great and let's continue to explore but let's reframe it there's no problems there's, I, there's, I, sorry, there, there's definitely problems but there's a, lot, there's a lot less now than we, i think we the, the dialogue uh the dialogue maybe denotes so just enjoy Man, it be happy that's be it. And, 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 and to be honest, you. You, you've, you've come a long way, you know, I'm patting you on the back. You're all good. Just chill out on all the problem fixing because it's, yeah, it's, we're good. We're okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think 
also uh, it's very underestimated still today um just the overall experience you know we we put so much, so much emphasis into cafes in terms of fit out and machinery and the aprons and the overall experience how we serve the coffee and if someone has a bad day no matter how many problems we solve you know he's not going to enjoy the same coffee the same way that he's going to enjoy it with you know a bunch of good friends and their companies and really enjoying even the actual process of drinking coffee i think we by what you're saying to kind of add on to that we almost come detached from the overall experience by focusing so much on these little tiny things problems that don't exist so yeah i feel you i know what you're saying yeah yeah i That's- just think if everyone could just spend a moment maybe thinking about that a little bit because it you know what it feels like just to have a bit of an honest honest exchange is we're still very picky and testy at each other's viewpoints or this or that and and to be really honest it's it's a sign of insecurity um <laughs> We've come so far. Look at look 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 what we've achieved in the evolution of specialty coffee from the farm to the cafe to the competition stages to now. Look at people on Instagram and the internet. Look at the crazy things they're doing and the amazing latte art. We don't have many problems to fix, you know. We've got some historical problems to fix in terms of farmers being paid more and lots of things along the chain. Absolutely, but let's direct energy there. Let's let's really sit beside ourselves and be comfortable that we've come so far and let's just high five our friends for having a go and continually to try and you know evolve and and tweet those one percenters but you know things are good guys and just please be settled with that enjoy it yeah i like it i love it that's that's beautiful yeah <laughs> that's i think a good message and the uh, people who're going to rewatch this they're going to really let that sink in for a bit um yeah i i understand what you're saying thanks man um so i guess i have more than just a lot of question but time is kind of ticking but which is great um i had a lovely chat so far man um so what I'll do is the last question because it's always this this is my closing question that we got through the questions that people have sent through um what's next on mats planet So on the immediate future it's helping to open up on a Melbourne which is incredibly exciting venture Brunswick yeah Brunswick long time coming big warehouse flagship store and continuing to work with our retail arm and you know help to ensure that that is everything that that it can be and I'm sure that it will push um getting our style of coffee out there our beliefs and i think that's going to be really refreshing for melbourne so that's what the rest of the year looks like beyond that is continue to help grow on a coffee nationally and internationally and within my role i have a lot of scope to to achieve that so that's really cool um judging the judging the australian barista championship this year so that's been really wonderful to get back on the other side and uh sit alongside a lot of people that have helped um you know build me up and give me a lot of feedback over the years so giving back that way and really getting perspective from from that that side of the bench so to speak is 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 incredible so looking forward to that this year and who knows next year maybe I'll jump back in the ring and and compete again maybe I'll compete again maybe I'll do some coaching uh but whatever I do I will continue to help adding value wherever i can yeah thanks to it um thank you and uh i feel very grateful and humbled by you sharing what you shared and coming here and give me give us uh your time even though you probably got plenty on your hands in lockdown but still i appreciate that man and uh we yeah you're right we came a long way we covered a lot in this chat i think that there's a lot of good gems and good value that you know you added to to the crowd and uh I'm glad to have created this space for this reason so that nice. even if we add value to one person I'm happy um 
I'll go back to some of these questions, and we might have to stretch it over the hour because um, there's a few, and I, I want to give everyone a go. But nice. there's a question that's been doubled, um, and it's an interesting question. What's your definition of flat white? <laughs> <laughs> So at Honor, we've we've taken the milk-based coffee and we've 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 made it into one beverage. Essentially, it's not a latte, it's not a cappuccino, it's not really a flat white. It's it's built on espresso strength and milk weight. So that's the way we approach milk coffee. Now, within that, we'll use the foam depth or how much you've textured the milk. So whether it's flat white latte or cappuccino foam uh, to then change the experience of that drink because you'll drink through foam. And whether it's thin or thick, it's going to completely change the perception of the coffee, uh, how you go in for a second sip, whether you swirl it and all this sort of thing. So if I go back to my old school terminology, the flat white will have a, a thinner amount of foam. Um, but when we weren't measuring such details like milk weight, so how much milk you're putting on top of your espresso base, when you'd use the same cup, when you would do a flat white or make a flat white, you'd have a thin amount of foam. A latte would have a bit more. That's in a glass, so let's get rid of that. Let's talk about flat white and cappuccino. A flat white would have thinner foam and a cappuccino would have thicker foam. So a flat white with less foam has more milk compared to a cappuccino that has more foam, has less milk. So essentially a flat white is a weaker drink because it has more of milk diluting the espresso. So a flat white is gen generally, if we use the old school terminology when we weren't focusing on these really specific details, it's a, it's a smoother uh, drink, whereas a cappuccino is, is a bit more of a stronger drink working within that realm. Hopefully that answers your question. 100% I'm sure it has and you know, we go back on the micro problems. Everyone has their own answer, but that's a very comprehensive one. Thanks, dude. Um, the next one is a bit, it, it's, I love it. I love this question because he touched base. Probably he didn't, you know, he didn't join the chat earlier on. Um, do you ever question between your passion and money, especially when specialty coffee is not known to be huge profitable industry? Well, it's probably, it probably means that it's known to not be a huge profitable industry. Sorry, go on. Yeah, look, if you look at the coffee industry worldwide, the majority of the coffee industry is commercial coffee, right? And beyond that, you have a world of instant coffee and the way it's always been, Nescafe. And, and this, is the, this is the majority of the world. So especially coffee is a very, very small part of, of that industry. And therefore... The costs of doing everything in a specialty realm are higher. And yes, you can charge more, but for a relatively young and infant industry in the scope of how big and how old the whole coffee industry is, it's quite small. So I'd agree that potentially the, you know, the ability to earn a lot may be reduced according or compared to what commercial coffee resources could offer you. But... Once again, what is your why? Is your why to earn a lot of money or is your why to walk the specialty coffee line? Because you can have both. It just depends on how you direct yourself within that realm, within business. If maybe you can open five specialty coffee shops and make a lot of money and maybe you can, you know, maybe you're comfortable being a barista in a cafe and, and earning a certain wage. But what I do know is that for certain is there is so much opportunity to earn money in specialty coffee and you just it's up to it's up to you what motivates you you know are you more driven by tasting and flavor and what specialty coffee is about or you want to earn a lot of money go figure out a way to do that yeah it's, and you, you got to figure out what your motivation is and i mean yeah it's you, um, you can have it all you just I don't think it's that black and white. I think it's a lot more complex and layered than that. But generally speaking, 
we know what a wage for a barista is. You know, we know what a, a wage for a roaster is or all these sorts of things, but there's so much more beyond that. And it's not necessarily just doing your time as a barista before I go on to something else because that's often the notion is I'll become a barista and I'll, I'll do my time there and I'll become a roaster and I'll do my time there and I'll go on to, to do something else. And um, it's fine. It's fine to get all that experience. I've actually done all of that and not with the notion to necessarily get to an end point, but just I was so interested in coffee that I went from being a barista to a roaster to a green bean buyer to quality control to buying coffee at the farms to green bean buying to head roaster to a trainer to an account manager to um, barista competition, a judge now in senior management consulting around the world for with different coffee people. So I'm, and it goes back to my why I am, so interested in learning and developing so I can then offer so much more to, to the industry. And I feel a sense of value when I can do that. So. Yeah. I, it, yeah, that really answered. Well, look, um, T Nguyen, uh, to add to that, your question is something that I'm very passionate about. I, you never chase money. That's a simple statement. Like, the minute you chase money, whether it's a bit, you know, you have start a business or a profession or something you're passionate about, if you chase money, you just lose at the start. Um, money is just a consequence of what you do. And I go back to sports. Um, some people are passionate about sport. And, and everyone is fixated on the fact that, oh, they got to become the next uh, soccer football player, like a top world player. Sport, like Football or soccer has so many depths. You can start a magazine. You can start a YouTube channel. You can start, you can become, you can go on television and become a journalist. There are so many roles within any industry as long as the primary aspect is your passion. And yeah. to, to rephrase yours, it's, it's around the why, correct? I, think spot on. I actually think you've taken my point and made it a lot more deeper and meaningful and contextual because you actually hit the nail on the head. And I think people see it as a cliche a lot of the time. They can't quite see the forest through the trees, but <clears throat> you, you know, I think you're right. Like if, if you act from, I just want to earn money today. How do I earn more money today? You're, you're in the wrong box. You're focusing on the wrong thing. What you need to find is what's your purpose? Like, what do you love doing? What are you great at? What can you do for 16 hours a day and just feel like there's not enough hours in the day to do it because that is what's going to give you the money as a byproduct. Um, you know, and you can you can go really esoterical on it as well, and the way the universe works. And you know, you can, talk to, you can talk to Jim Carrey and a lot of rich people. Like, money is important. Money will give you a lot of happiness. It will. It'll be, it'll allow you to do so many things. But if you go there and, and and get a lot of money, you'll end up majority of people coming back to realizing that wasn't actually what made them happy. It's it's the purpose and it's it's the reason and the passion of why you're actually doing it. Um, and, you know, you can figure out that on your own journey, but it doesn't take long to do a bit of research to find out very wealthy people uh, will have that similar message. So, 100%, man. And look, I, I love where we're going, and I know that Instagram will cut it, will cut the live because it's only 60 minutes. Are you good with time to go off another 10, or are you, you strapped? No, that's fine. That's you good? Uh, because I, I got a few, you know, I got a few other good questions. Um, Origin sourced. Um, we're gonna answer your question soon. Just join again the live because Instagram is Instagram is only uh, allowing sixty minutes. So I'll end this because it's one minute to go, and then I'll, I'll you just join back in. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Cool, man. This is great. I love what we're doing. <laughs> but this has been good, bro. <laughs> Hang on, we got this. Part one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, p part two, um, part two of the live. Uh, if you just tuning in, uh, we had a an amazing sixty minutes conversation with uh, Matt Lewin, and uh, we're just going to continue on. There's some amazing questions uh, on the previous live that I would love to uh, get them answered. So. Uh, just uh, type your question for Matt. It's a Q&A. It's Q&A 
time. Host will be net and uh, hopefully join us. Hey, Lukey, Java, Remy, uh, we're waiting for Matt to join us again. Uh, we had an amazing conversation with him and there were some more other questions, but we we're running out of time and Instagram would have uh, shut the live down. So we're just going to wait for him to join. And uh, once he joined, we'll be able to, here it is, continue on that. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for giving me and us and everyone else uh, extra time here. Um, I know it's, 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 you know, time is precious, but we are really giving, making an impact, I like to think. Um, and to close it off, your eye, I mean, the best ROI, because people love this statement, the best yeah. title, because it's a supervisor to I see, the best ROI is happiness and love what you do. So that's just the, the drop line on that one. Um, so I, Origin Source, I remember from the previous slide because I can't grab those questions again, asked if you have any advice on how to start for newbies. So as a new barista, what, what advice would you have for a new barista? Yeah, it, it all comes down to your, your attitude. Mm -hmm. My advice would be just completely check that at all times and make sure you are like a sponge to absorb information. And like I've come from very much being young and egotistical and wanting to push my chest out and prove myself and have a go to have a laugh that people are drinking decaf and soy mocha coffees. And, and, and then you realize in time that you move past that because you're actually just hurting the industry having that attitude because anybody that's drinking coffee is, is, is someone that gets us and gets our industry. So for me, the quicker you can come to that realization that everyone that drinks coffee is just, it's a wonderful thing. And you can then use your skills as a barista to engage and maybe show them a different world, but maybe not maybe just give them their decaf coffee. But you know what? Make it the best decaf coffee they've ever had. And make their day. Make their day. That's, I was going to close it like that, yeah. And then in the background, <laughs> master your craft. Research. Test everything. Taste everything. Record all data. Have a plan for when you experiment with a coffee. What is your goal? I want my milk coffee to taste like big body, big chocolate, super, super smooth, round and sweet. All right, reverse engineer how you're going to do that and then figure out why things happen so you know why things happen and why they don't so then you can repeat it every time because when you master the technical side of things and you know that you're in full control of what you want to create as an intended experience for the customer, then... You can feel so confident, calm, mature, and settled in your approach and abilities with coffee that you can engage with them and just say, hey, how are you? How's your day? What would you like? And make them the most incredible coffee, provide them the most incredible experience, and be an incredible barista. Be so lovely to your fellow team members, respect your boss, turn up on time, work hard, look after yourself, and... Like, like you said earlier, it doesn't matter what you do. Like, why not be the best at it? You're going to be there anyway. You're going to be there on bar, on shift. Why not, why not crush it and just be the example? Correct. Love right. it. So, and my other thing too for newbies is reach out. I know I said this before with competition. Reach out to me. Reach out to you. Reach out to anybody else create a community through actively connecting with people to then actually build your world. You know, you are one click away and a lovely message away from being able to plug into so many wonderful people and so much information, which is going to just mainline great knowledge to you. So then you can go and test and apply. And then the last thing is whenever anybody gives you something, share something with you, just thank them, show gratitude constantly. 
Yeah, I love it. I, and it's funny because what you just said about reaching out is touching base with the next question. And the next question, I got a great example for Luke uh, on how easy it is. And that confirms that everyone is a click away because I, I started this new live stream show taking advantage of the situation and doing something about it. And it's been incredible. I have been reaching out to some people that I've always looked up to or people that I'm like, oh, yeah, he will never answer to me. And yet he or she have. And, I mean, uh, the latest actually last night is a person that you know very well, I think. Starts with S and keep going with ASA. And I think he's going to join us in a couple of weeks. So there you go. <laughs> You you, nice. you, beat, you beat the master. Um, but Luke is asking this. Um, I'm wanting to learn more, but struggle to find mentors. What's the best move if I want to learn more in, say, sensory, uh, which is what my weakness is? Yeah, so sensory is uh, one of those interesting ones where there's no substitute for experience at all. So when I was roasting coffee every day, I was cupping coffee every day. And because of that connection and daily repetition, I was so dialed in to tasting coffee with very focused and nuanced detail. I could pick up very, very sensitive elements where maybe other people in the room couldn't. And I don't do that as much anymore. So I'm a little bit rusty in terms of my cupping abilities, but you need to buy every fruit, nut, seed, chocolate, flour, everything you can when they're in season and eat them and actually actively engage when you eat something, when you drink a coffee, when you have a glass of wine, whatever you do, and really think about the process. That's how you develop an incredible palate and sensory skills because you'll have a really strong memory attached to the sensory experience because you're act actively engaged in it. So most of the time we eat and drink things and we don't really think about it. Like when was the last time you ate an apricot and really thought about the flavor and the texture and the aroma? So for me, I, I love flavor. And whenever I eat anything, I'm always just innately processing what it tastes like. So I, I build up this current memory bank of whenever I see something in a coffee, ah, it's what I see. And often that resonates with a lot of people. So that's something you can do for yourself. Once again, you know, there's lots of training and classes out there that you can also plug into, but there's lots of books you can read as well on, on, on sensory development, a lot of neuroscience like Angus Mackey is someone you could reach out to as well. He's done a whole routine on this. Uh, Matt Winton as well from Maine. You know, there's lots of people around that have actually explored these rabbit holes really deeply. So have a chat to them about it as well. It's, yeah, it's, and like, once again, like, honestly, people can contact me. Uh, I'm more than happy to have a chat with anybody on the phone, Zoom, Instagram, whatever they want about stuff. Like, yeah, my, I'm, I'm here to give advice and add value and, and whatever I can do. I'd love to see lights go on in people and, and help out. And I think, once again, I keep coming back to this, but just reach out and connect to people, <clears throat> build a network, and you will be so amazed at what you will learn, as you've proven as well, right, in time. You'll have this community that's just able to connect with you and supply so much information and give you great advice. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, dude. And yeah, look, look uh, on a practical level too, just write down a list of mentors or write down a list of, you know, heroes and gurus and people that you find, you know, that you want to autograph off. Just punch them all in. And I, I bet you you can find at least 100 people in the coffee industry and then go on their social networks, where it's LinkedIn, where it's Facebook, where it's Instagram. Become a gentle, humble stalker, if you want, yeah. uh, without, without stalking, and just uh, reach out. And look, the worst that can happen is just they're not going to answer, and that's reality because it's too busy, or uh, your email goes in the spam box, that's okay. Or what happened to me where, you know, I hit up Matt, and he said, yeah, I'd love to go on a live stream with you and, uh, and talk about this and that. And I was like, oh, sweet, cool. Let's book it in. Yeah. yeah. Just, just give it a go, man. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, anyone else got any questions? Obviously, there you go. Talking about newbies, I lost all the questions of the previous live. I got carried oh, away. Without... 
Sorry, everybody. <laughs> That's all right. It's uh, probably coffee this morning, so I'm, I'm on, on the chat. Yeah. Yeah. They were. They also were probably old questions of people that left already. But that's okay. We went for 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 a fair bit. Um, if anyone has any questions, please send them through. Uh, we already blew the sixty minutes that Matt kindly, uh, you know, uh, dedicated to to us. Um, no, look, Matt. It's, it's look. I think just to just to you know play to the point that. I think it's really wonderful what you're doing as well. I, I always am admired the space where people can connect like this and, and learn something and information so live and so available. And, uh, you know, we, we can all, we can all co connect with one click away. And there's, yeah. you know, there's so much to, <clears throat> to be learned by being able to do that. So embrace it, take advantage of it and, uh, you know, just connect. But I think, What's really cool is, like you said before, have a goal, have a set of questions, have a purpose. That's the If you can come prepared into a, a question or a meeting, you come prepared with a goal in mind and, and you're happy to pivot along the way. It just shows a lot of intelligence and thoughtfulness and respect to where you want to go because you don't want to waste people's time. So, you know, there's lots of little, little bits of advice in there as well on how to navigate, you know, those inquisitions to people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, dude. No, I, I, that, that definitely was the goal. And um, I figured out that um, we could – look, we have two options under lockdown, um, given that obviously we're healthy and not uh, facing different type of hardships. So let's start from that, obviously, and I'm not. Um, you know, I – we all have the choice to dwell in and just read the negative news that pop through and get updates on the number of cases and deaths and all this negative stuff. Or we can pick up a project or something that we wanted to do for a while. Um, and there's no better time now because we got those 16 hours because we might not be working and we have enough savings to get us going. So yeah. uh, it, that was kind of it, but it was a, a way for people to, Rewatch these lives in one month or a week or in an hour time and be like, okay, for 60 minutes plus, I'm just going to be distracted. I'm going to be receiving value, learn something from these amazing people that I've been connecting with. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of you guys that have been contacting people that I wanted to meet in a previous, in a previous life as well, you know, when I was working for another coffee roaster. But you know how it is. Yeah. You focus on your accounts. You focus on on your people, and you can't just hang out with other roasters. Or, or, or you know, you you kind of have to, you know, you respect everyone. You're friends with everyone, but you gotta also respect the boundaries between the company that you represent. So, when now I'm just like I can talk to anyone freely. Um, promoting what they do or not do, and I and I find a lot of value. That's my new why for sure. So, yeah, yeah thanks, man. Walking and living that truth, and I'm sure you can attest to the the fact that it's you know the best thing you've done. Like I can already, yeah, legit, legit, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, look, thank you for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. Very definitely gratitude coming from me and the people who are gonna watch this again. Um, if you want to, you know, this is obviously final, uh, fun, you know, the end, tail end of the episode. If you want to plug in or say anything about, you know, anything or anyone, just please, man, this is your, you can just leave any message you want, man. Yeah. Look, I think in the spirit of what you're doing, it's, it's really fitting to say to anybody out there, if you've got any questions, you have anything you want advice on, you, you want to connect on anything coffee, um, you know, please get in contact. I've got my website as well, matthewlewin.com.au, so hit that up. Um, you want to buy delicious coffee, you know, Honor Coffee's got some incredible coffees to buy. And, yeah, feel free to connect with myself, connect with Honor. Um, we're a really open, armed, humble, uh, you know, bunch of people that uh, just want to add some – some value and have fun along the way to specialty coffee. So please, you know, reach out, connect. Don't be afraid to ask a question. And I just wish everyone 
the best on their coffee journey. Stay safe and well, and can't wait to to give everyone a big old hug. Uh, in in when we can get back to that, be nice. Yeah. Fantastic, man. Thanks, dude. I look forward to maybe drinking a brew in Brunswick. I'm not far from there. I actually visited uh, yeah, Tom, nice. Tom and Devin. I was there about a couple of months ago when everything was kind of, you know, well, the way it was two months ago. So yeah. uh, I'm familiar with the area. I used to live a block away from there. So uh, I used to go to Kynes all the time uh, to see the guys from Wood Co. Good people. Yeah. Um, shout Good out guys. to Aaron. But, um, yeah, I look forward to have a brew there, man, for sure, in real life. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, dude. Yeah. I really yeah, appreciated won't, you. It won't be too long, and, yeah, I look forward to bringing some coffee together. It'll be great. Heck, yeah, man. Looking forward to it. Yeah, Thanks, Bye, dude. Everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. There you have it. Um, I'm feeling you can't see the goosebumps because I'm wearing a sweater. Um, I, my brain is being tickled by so many good elements that Matt and I were vibing. Um, this is just my element. This is where I best perform internally. I, I love a lot of stuff that Matt was talking about, uh, his values and the things that he, he puts before anything else. Um, the concept of why we're doing what we're doing, um, following the passion, uh, having mentors, um, don't follow money, but your passion more than anything. I, yeah, I mean, I'm in the plateau. I really am. Um, I don't know. I had a good feeling, a good vibe. I never met Matt, uh, but you know, sometimes you have a connection and it's just instant click. And I feel that, Guys, if you have 60 minutes or you can scroll through it, you can just swipe back and you can watch again the first, the part one of the live that we just finished. It's packed. It's packed of good stuff. It really is uh, good advice for new baristas, uh, good advice for life, good advice for any type of professionals. I was actually blown away that Matt, um, he just, uh, you know, dropped school. He wanted to become a lawyer. Uh, that's something that resonated well with me. I never started uni. I, you know, my mom was always upset that I didn't go to uni because she's a teacher. And coffee found me the same way that coffee found Matt. Um, in a different way, we're obviously different, very different careers. I'm now doing social media for coffee shops and cafes and coffee roasters, but, and he's, you know, the Australia barista champion, but nonetheless, I think that what we touch base on today, I'm going to record it, put it on a podcast on YouTube because it's good stuff. Guys, it's good stuff for people joining us now, like, like you, Danny makes Alejandro, Rywood. Uh, Sefitrean, Juan from Chile, Kuzu Pirzola, uh, all the people joining in now, guys, uh, Beats and Beans, all of you guys joining now, please do yourself a favor. It gives me only pleasure if you go back and watch this live um, again. Uh, I make no money out of lives. Uh, it's just simply good content, good concepts, and uh, really, really a beautiful chat with uh, Matt Lewin. So I'm going to close it. Thank you for tuning in. This was the episode eight, end of episode eight. I'm going to record it and post it on YouTube and my podcast um, very soon. My podcast is Mir Coffee with Mirko, currently just available on Anchor and Spotify. And if you guys want to reach out, Matthew just left his website here, matthewlewin.com.au. So if you have any questions, if you need a mentor, hit him up. He's a good guy. And I can't wait to meet him in real life. And tomorrow episodes, uh, it's going to go at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern, time, Eastern Standard Time. That's a tough word each time. And we're going to be joined by Alberto from Tostato Specialty Coffee. So until then, guys. Thank you for joining. Stay safe.
follow your dream, follow your passion, seek your fixation, and yeah, be good. Sending you much love. See you guys. See you tomorrow.